Welcome everybody. This is the budget in finance, May 6, 2023 edition. Um, we've got a presentation to do before we get to the bill. So if you're sitting out in the crowd waiting on a bill, I apologize to you. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get to our presentation. Uh, Ms. Kelly from the finance department is gonna come up and uh, tell us all about our proposed calendar for the stadium related legislation. So it's Ms. Kelly Flannery, but I, was, I like calling you Ms. Kelly. Make sure that microphone's working and is it working? You don't sound safe. Hello. Oh, that one works. Ms. Flannery, if you'll introduce yourself and it's all yours. Sure. Kelly, F Kelly Flannery, finance director. Uh, I just want to take a couple minutes. I found myself um, some point last week kind of creating my own little summary sheet and thought maybe that would be helpful um, as Councilmember Allen always says, for the people at home. So uh, <laughs> just, I, I appreciate that um, the ordinance 1741 is not on the agenda today, but I did just wanna have a conversation about what pieces of legislation we're asking this council to react to as it relates to the stadium. And there are two pieces. Uh, one is resolution 2023-2044, which is on budget and finance today, and that is the Nashville Needs Impact Fund. And the second is on council agenda tomorrow, 2023-1741, which through a total of, I think, 11 exhibits maybe, um, includes all of the meat that we've been talking about through the term sheet process. Um, and this was just meant to show the difference between the sports authority approvals versus council. The only difference is council approves the boundaries of the sales tax and sports authority approves the license agreement as well as the PSL agreement. Otherwise, both entities, both sets of documents. Be good through there. And I'll, I'll have Rosie circulate this to everyone. And so just a proposed calendar. We're trying as hard as possible. It's a little bit of a jingle puzzle to do sports authority and budget and finance committee meetings, same topic, same week. And I, I, I think we're there. So today we are here. On Wednesday, we'll be at sports authority. Um, sports authority because they have some responsibility changes. We'll start going through that with them on Wednesday. But for the most part, on the 20th, um, for both Sports Authority and Budget and Finance, we will begin the walkthrough of the documents. And it's important that we kind of start with the documents because they define what's in the financing plan. So on the 28th, we'll have a specially called meeting of Budget and Finance. One, because I committed to it, and two, because Order of operations, got to get through the documents before we can talk about the financing plan. So both of those will be on the 28th. And then the third, budget and finance again. And the fourth, sports authority again. So, and I would just add that we will continue to take questions as they come in. Um, hopefully harvest them all. This Director Darby, I think I'm going to volunteer you to continue to be the recipient of those and circulate them to us. and. We'll turn and burn as fast as we can um, with the responses. I, I didn't really have anything else to update. If anyone had any questions, I don't know. Councilmember Allen, looks like you were wanting to ask something. Thank you. Yeah, just uh, procedurally, will there? Be, I mean, in, will this be under the East Bank website, or will there be a new website created? It's been very helpful to have all these questions summarized in one spot and somebody has done a great job of sort of thematically putting the other, which has just been great. So will that continue and where will it be? You're, you're recognized. Um, I, I was gonna say that uh, questions that come in, you should send them to Danielle Godin. She is the uh, person in our office who's tasked with um, tracking uh, questions related and I'm gonna continue to ask her to do that. Um, uh, I think that it could go on the East Bank Committee uh, SharePoint. Um, just for ease of reference for everyone, we may have a different category of you know, post legislation or specifically related to this particular um, ordinance as opposed to the categories that are already in existence. Councilmember Allen, are you through? Thank you. Yep, that's my question. Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. And just to follow up on Councilmember Allen's question, um, I was, uh, as chair of the East Bank Stadium Committee, I was having that same discussion with uh, Director Darby and 
uh, Chair Roten um, before the meeting. Uh, we really don't, the, the committee is supposed to be gathering information um, and the debate is supposed to happen with our substantive committees. Um, and so um, this that we're looking at hasn't been put together um, in, um, in concert with the East Bank Stadium Committee. Um, and, and so um, it, I think Director Darby's right that it can go on the committee web page uh, because that's where the information is, but it's at risk of being a little confusing because the committee isn't really involved at this point in the process. And hopefully one of those meetings can change because I'm gonna be at a trial in Memphis um, for the budget and finance committee meeting listed up there. Thank you, Council Member Mendez. And um, I think we had some discussions, everybody. I'd, I'd had some discussion with some folks that maybe when we do the budget and finance special meeting, it could be just a, a joint budget and finance and everybody on the East Bank Committee could be here. That way it's it's one big committee. And so uh, that way we would just do it that way. Yeah, so um, anybody else with any other questions for Director Flannery? Seeing no hands, Director Flannery, Should thank you very much. Oh, you've got one more, sorry. Uh, I should have added for the, the 20th and the 28th, we, we're applicable, we have um, the experts that we've retained. So on the 20th, you'll see um, our external attorneys that have been assisting with us. On the 28th, you'll see um, some revenue projection consultants as well as the proposed underwriters will be here for those as well. So if there's anyone else, um, that kind of is everybody, but if there's, Anybody else or anything in advance that you can vet, even if it's not a formal question, just to make sure we have the right people in the room, that would be helpful. Thank you, Director Flannery. All right, on to our agenda. I'm gonna go ahead and read through the items on the consent calendar. If you have anything that you want pulled, please just let me know as I'm, just holler at me, scream, do something. Twenty twenty three, twenty forty one, Hauser, Roten and Welsh approves the Fourth Amendment to a grant contract for constructing affordable housing approved by RS 2018-1088 between the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission and Westminster Home Connection. 2023-2042, Hauser, Roten and Welsh approves amendments to three grant contracts for constructing affordable housing approved by 2020-2039 between the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission and certain nonprofit organizations. 2023-2043, Hauser, Roten and Welsh approves the first amendment to six grant contracts for constructing affordable housing approved by RS 2021-936 between the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission and certain nonprofit organizations. 2023-2045, Roten and Pulley approves a contract between the Metropolitan Government and CDK Enterprises, DBA Southern Lighting and Traffic Systems, incorporated to provide service maintenance and licensing for the Centrix, Centrax ATMS software. Item number eight, 2023-2046, Roten, Syracuse, and Johnson amends the pay plan adopted for employees of the Metropolitan Departments of Police and Fire, effective July 1, 2022. 2023-2048, Roten, apologize, that right there is not on consent. Number eight, I just read that. 2023-2048, Roten, Hurt, Welsh, and Stiles approves an application for an Arts Build Communities grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metropolitan Arts Commission to support art projects that brought an access to the arts experience and enhanced the sustainability of asset-based cultural enterprises. 2023-2049, Roten, Hancock, Allen, and Welch approves an application for an, emergency, an energy efficiency and cons conservation block grant from the U.S. Department of Energy to the Metro Department of General Services for an energy retrofit for the Metro Nashville Historic Courthouse to replace lower efficiency, a lower efficient incandescent bulbs with LED lamps, improve thermal efficiency, and minimize air leakage. 2023-2050, Roten, Syracuse, and Welsh approves a grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide for the prevention, survival, 
surveillance, diagnosis, and treatment of HIV AIDS and to administer a minority AIDS initiative program. 2023-2051 wrote in Syracuse, Hancock, and others, approves a grant from the Friends of Metro Animal Care and Control to the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide funding for emergency medical care for shelter animals. 2023-2052 wrote in Allen and Welsh, approves a grant from the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee to the Information Technology Services Department to fund the position of Digital Inclusion Officer to manage the allocation of resources to ensure equitable service delivery and expand economic opportunities in the meeting and meeting the needs of the underserved. 2023-2053 wrote in Syracuse approves an application for a Justice of Families grant from the U.S. Department of Justice to the Office of Family Safety to improve the response of the civil criminal justice systems for underserved communities while providing resources and training to court-based personnel. 2023-2054 wrote in Syracuse and Hancock approves a high-intensity drug trafficking area programs grant from the Office of National Drug Control Policy to the Metro Nashville Police Department to provide additional funding to aid in investigation of drug-related deaths. 2023-2055 wrote in Pulley, approves the Department of Water and Sewerage Services to enter into a waste data pilot program with RootAware Global and to accept a donation of $30,000 for hardware, software, and services associated with the program. 2023-2056 wrote in Pulley, Hancock, and others, approves a grant application for the Recycling and Education Outreach Grant from the United States Environmental Protection Agency to the Metro Department of Water water sewerage services to develop multilingual outreach tools focused on reducing contamination, increasing participation, and improving community engagement. That is the consent calendar. Do I have anyone want anything pulled off? Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I need to be uh, abstaining from 2050. All right, without objection, Councilmember Hurt is abstaining on 2023-2050. Uh, seeing nothing else, can I get a motion from the consent calendar? Move properly seconded, all in favor? Any opposed? You approve the consent calendar. 12 in favor, zero against. All right, we're back on our main calendar. Um, first item on the agenda, resolution 2023-2037 wrote in Syracuse and Johnston appropriates $1 million from a certain account of the Community Safety Fund for a grant to the Urban League of Middle Tennessee. Get a motion moved and properly seconded. Any comments on the resolution? Council Member Evans, you are recognized. Thank you. I just, I really wanted to know if the mayor's representatives are going to be in public safety tomorrow um, to answer questions, because I think my questions are more appropriate for that committee. Anyone from the administration? Yeah. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a head nod from the administration table. Thank you, Council Member Evans. Seeing nothing else, all in favor? Any opposed? You approve. 12 in favor, zero against. Item number two, 2023-2040, Hauser, Roten, and Welsh approves a fourth, the Fourth Amendment to a grant contract for con constructing affordable housing approved by RS 2018-1088 between the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission and Crossroads Campus. Get a motion. Move properly seconded. Any comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? You approve. 12 in favor, zero against. Item number six, RS 2023-2044, Withers, Roten, Hurt, and others creates a Nashville Needs Impact Fund to help provide resources to nonprofit entities serving Nashville and Davidson County and designating certain amounts there too. We have an amendment from Council Member Reese. Can I get a motion on the resolution? Moved, properly seconded. Council Member Van Reese, um, you, are, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Roden. Um, I'd like to uh, move the amendment with a brief exclamation. 
We have motion properly seconded on the amendment. Council Member Van Reesh, you're recognized. Um, yes, I'd like to um, make sure that folks know that this is a friendly amendment um, and uh, it actually just clarifies a lot of the original intent uh, by including that the fund may also be used for the provision of resources to entities related to the professional women's sports infrastructure, promotion, marketing, and direct recruitment. Um, this allows qualified entities to uh, make uh, uh, opportunities for them to uh, access this uh, fund and uh, with that um, and with the uh, support of the administration uh, and all parties involved, I ask for your approval. Thank you, Council Member Van Rees. Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. <laughs> Thanks, I, I missed that one when I was looking through the amendments earlier today and I'm trying to just lay eyeballs on it before I vote yes. Can somebody tell me what page in the package it is? Page nine. All right, can we get faster internet speed here so my amendments will download faster? 79%. Look at my yeah, that'd be great. For those at home that did not hear, Councilmember Mendez is getting a copy to look at. All right, so we have uh, an amendment properly seconded. Seeing no more comments, all in favor? Any opposed? You adopt approval. 12 in favor, zero against. All right, we are back on the Resolution, uh, Council Member Withers, would you like to talk on this since this is yours? All right, so we have um, um, we were talking about this earlier, so I need someone to make a motion if we are going to uh, defer this. It's my understanding that we were discussing deferring this till the first meeting in April. Okay. Oh, sorry. Councilman Van Rees. Uh, yes, I'd like to move uh, this resolution forward as amended to uh, track with uh, the, uh, the first meeting in April. Okay, so we have a motion properly Four. seconded. Day before my anniversary. <laughs> Seeing no hands, all in favor? Any opposed? You recommend deferral to the first meeting in April. Next item on the agenda, on the agenda, item number eight, 2023-2046, Roten, Syracuse, and Johnston, amends the pay plan adopted for employees of the Metro Metropolitan Departments of Police and Fire, effective July 1, 2022. Can I get a motion? Yeah. Properly seconded. Um, any comments? Seeing none. Oh, I got hands. Councilmember Mendez, I saw you first. I um, recognize. Can somebody summarize what this does, and then I think I've got a question. Uh, Ms. Darby or the administration? Deputy Chief Gilder, I'm being told that you are in the back. Deputy Chief Gilder, you're recognized. Please introduce yourself for everybody. Thank you. <clears throat> Is it on? It's on. Just, okay. You'll have to put it close to your mouth so you can... All right, Chief Gilder um, with the Metro Police Department. Thank you. I actually brought uh, Seth Walton Ball, who is with uh, Police HR, to help uh, explain um, what exactly the resolution does for us. So this is um, requesting approval of a pay plan amendment uh, to allow for an education incentive program, or excuse me, entertainment district incentive program uh, for officers who are assigned to the entertainment district. You may have seen some news stories about this, that they're dedicated 35 uh, individuals in that unit. Um, this gives them an incentive. Uh, it's really focused on the retention piece, um, the funding. I know there was a question about the funding. Um, we have set aside some funds for recruitment and retention, and that's the most consistent feedback we get from officers leaving the department is mandates to work overtime downtown. Um, so this hopes to address some of that, uh, but this uh, will continue in perpetuity, uh, assuming that it's approved, and uh, we anticipate that it may have some savings on overtime cost that will probably pay for the amount that we're allocating a couple times over, so. 
Thank you, Council Member Mendez. Thanks, and then in the spirit of Council Member Evans' um, comment about, I don't know if it's right for budget and finance, but I'll just mention um, that I would like more information about, there was, there was a media report last week about um, basically a, a private um, force of officers um, downtown that are hired by the um, the new um, whatever organization it is of bar owners. Um, and the thing in particular in the story that got my attention was how out of town police officers have Davidson County arresting authority. I don't know whether that was right, um, but that's what it said. And I'm curious um, to find out whether that is accurate and, um, and how the relationship works between um, our MNPD officers downtown in this private force. And again, I don't, um, this probably isn't the right committee for it, but if you get me some information, um, I'd appreciate it. Sure, I was planning on attending public safety committee tomorrow. Um, okay. Would you like me to speak to it then? or, you, or Yeah, I'll, I'll come by for that if I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Councilmember Allen, I know. Councilmember Allen, I know you had your hand up. Did you want to say anything? It was the same question. I just want to make sure people heard that that we're, this is the difference between an incentive and an over overtime, and it probably will be better for morale and, and better for for our budget as well. So I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Councilmember. All right, seeing no other hands. Oh, apologize, Councilmember Hurt, you're recognized. Now, in terms of the employees, these all employees, whether they are uh, administrative and not just officers or firefighters. Or is it just the firefighters and officers? This is just for the police officers that are working the entertainment district uh, unit, which is the officers you see stationed on foot along Broadway. Oh, okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Council Member. Seeing no other hands, all in favor? Any opposed? You adopt, be approved. 12 in favor, zero against. Moving on to items on second reading, I'm gonna go ahead and read through the ones on consent and then we'll come back to item number 18. Uh, item number 19, 2023, 1733, Roten, Withers and Pulley approves the acquisition of certain rights of what, right of way easements and property rights for use in public projects of the Metropolitan Government for purposes of the National Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure for the 1809 Antioch Pike easement acquisition project. And item 20, 2023, 1734, Roten and Pulley approves a contract between the Metropolitan Government and Principal Environmental Incorporated to provide parts and products needed for Metro Water and Sewerage Services equipment. Can I get a motion? Moved and properly seconded. You're voting on the consent calendar on bills on second reading. All in favor? Any opposed? You approve. 12 in favor, zero against. We are back to item number 18, 2022, 1631. Uh, Styles, Portico, Allen, and others um, amends Title II of the Metropolitan Code to create the National Entertainment Commission. Could I get a motion? Moved and properly seconded. We have an amendment by Council Member Styles. Council Member Styles, you are recognized. Uh, could I get a motion on this amendment? Moved, properly seconded. And Council Member Styles, you are recognized on your amendment. Thank you very much, Chair. What it does is clarify some language in regards to the composition of the commission so that you could never have one industry have the majority of positions on the commission. Okay, and this is an amendment to your substitute that we put on last time, is that correct? Correct, correct. okay. So we have an amendment to her previous substitute. Uh, seeing no hands, all in favor? Yeah. Any opposed? You approve the amendment, 12 in favor, zero against. All right, and we have a second substitute um, by Council Member Syracuse. Council Member Syracuse, you are, sorry, recognized. Thank you, I move approval with uh, explanation. We have a motion and properly seconded. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Um, I know this is the Budget and Finance Committee and there's really not a uh, fiscal note on this, so I'll, I'll be brief on this, speaking of, from an operational perspective. So I've long contended uh, on this that uh, we really needed to work from a bottom-up approach with uh, engagement first and then crafting legislation. And so that's been one of my uh, 
contentiousness, I guess, with, with all this. And uh, But I, I had a, uh, I pulled together about 30 music industry leaders uh, about a week and a half ago or so. And I think with all of the, the work that has been done from, from everybody on this, which I do sincerely appreciate, um, I think we are about there. Um, this substitute uh, streamlines and focuses uh, on really addressing the needs from who we've heard from um, over the past year and a half or so, um, as should be done to bylaws of a, a entity or whatnot. It's far less prescriptive. Uh, it's much clearer about what the mission and goals should be. Um, the second element is that we've got to lead with our brand. Our brand is music. Um, so the, the name is aligned with the mayor's office of music, film, and entertainment. And so it matches the commission name to, to the same. So the full commission will hire the director and the mayor's office. It does give that sustainable connection between the executive and legislative branches. Um, it does make logical sense that the one person in the mayor's office who currently manages mostly all of the logistics and permitting, Gordon Richard, uh, he would uh, ostensibly move into this new office and help start setting it up from the ground up uh, while the commission works on hiring the director. Um, it does retain the sponsor's intent of having one cohesive commission. Um, it will just have a two pillar approach. It combines much of 1630 and having a film and TV advisory council, um, and then also has the Music City Music Council. The film and TV advisory, advisory is an important word on the film and TV side because there's best practices internationally about how a film and TV uh, a, a board or commission needs to work. It has to be an advisory capacity. It can't have any fiduciary or whatnot. So it, it has to have that in order for us to participate in an international best practice. Um, so these two councils, if you will, they'll do their work in between the full commission meetings, which will be quarterly. So it will retain, again, a cohesive uh, commission for everybody to be at the table. It retains the current 15-member commission uh, with the balance to a uh, pillar approach. And um, it, just as we just passed this amendment, it, it does this, this same thing where it doesn't functionally give um, any greater weight uh, from one side or the other. Um, so it helps codify Music Makes Us as a fundamental pillar to ensure that MNPS has a seat. It gives the Recording Academy Nashville chapter uh, two seats at the table. It gives even greater representation to the unions by giving them an additional seat. Um, and then it gives some non-decision but really important seats as ex officio non-decision making to Arts Commission, NECAT, CBC, and Chamber. The CBC and Chamber were really integral partners to the successful aspects of the Music City Music Council. So it's, it's important that they, they be at the table. Um, and then I did change the term from five to three. It, this, this gives an opportunity for more people to be involved. Five years, I thought, was a, a long term. Um, so it fundamentally is what, what the sponsor wants with a, uh, a unified commission. It give, brings better clarity, I feel, um, streamlines, um, and I ask for your approval. Thank you, Council Member Syracuse. Um, Council Member Johnston, you're recognized. Thank you. There was um, several of the emails that have come in have referenced from some of the people that were involved in these um, these me meetings that were going on that there was a study that was supposed to be happening and they were asking. I just want to, I have not been involved in this, but I'm just wondering what that study is. Is that true? When is, if so, when is that study supposed to come back? Is it something that we think is um, going to be helpful with this or not? Does anybody know? <laughs> no, um, I'm going to go to, yeah. I'll come to you, Councilmember Member Stiles. I'm going to go to Council Member Syracuse on the substitute about what she's speaking of, and then you can speak to the same thing after he gets through. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. The, the study is the venue study. That uh, did start about a couple few weeks ago. So that 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 is there. Um, it, you know, the, the, the study can help what is the tangible aspects of this private-public partnership that can support the working creatives and the small businesses uh, that support them. Um, so that's the study. I mean, point in case, I've never had a political timeline for, for any of this. Um, this study is not going to be really done until this fall. Um, so I, I do see where there could be value of going ahead and getting this commission set up and then those, especially on the music side, uh, would be able to help take the results of the study this fall um, and then help with the creation of the tools, policies, and programs that we can implement to help venues and working creatives in the city. So that's that's the study that they're referencing. And Council Member Stiles, did you have something to 
say about that as well? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, Council Member Syracuse is correct in terms of the music preservation study on, on venues here in the city. I would like to say that this is not a friendly substitute as you are voting on this this evening. One of the main things that has been heard because this work has been going on now for two years. It has not been rushed in any way. Councilmember Stiles, if you would, for just one second, we, we were answering her question. If you don't mind, if we could finish her question, then I'll come back to you if that's okay. Before. Okay. Okay. And then, because the administration, I think, I just wanted to check with them first on this, this study committee to see what was going on with that as well. So, Councilmember Johnston, did you have anything further? Thank you. I just, um, you know, one of the things when, Oh, several times when they referenced this study, they were part of this group that got together to talk about it. And their claim is that they feel like they were told this study was gonna happen and then they were gonna come back and reconvene and have something. I, what I don't want is to have all this, because I know there's been a ton of community engagement and lots of meetings and all that, but at the very end, do we leave it out where it's like, well, they still feel like they weren't heard or is, so I just, Councilman Syracuse is nodding his head like he has an answer to that. So I just don't want to have done all this great work and then at this, and still have people that have been very engaged in it feel like their voices aren't heard waiting on a study. Can we communicate that the study, I don't know what to do with that, but maybe somebody else does. If I could ask the administration for just one second, if they could chime in. Uh, so I think what you're referring to is the um the work done by Penn Praxis, as Councilman Syracuse has mentioned, uh, they've begun their work. Um, Real quick for the folks at home, we just introduce yourself. Ben Eagles, uh, Mayor's Office. Uh, Penn, Penn Praxis has begun their work. Uh, thanks to Councilman Syracuse, uh, their scope was expanded uh, to move beyond uh, just the pre preservation of in independent venues and to also look at this work. Uh, they've got folks that have uh, done similar work in cities around the world. We believe they can continue to be a resource either now um, as uh, we work to figure out the legislative path if this council were to, to wait. Um, but we also believe that the consultants can be of great use um, in launching the commission, in launching the office. Um, either way you decide to go, uh, we, we have a, a helpful resource in hand there. Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. If I may speak a bit to part of uh, Councilmember Johnston's question as sure. well in, in, in my response. Um, the emails that you did receive asking about the study, the meeting that Councilmember Syracuse did reference, it was a meeting that I, was unbeknownst to me or any other sponsors that was held. The study is not predicated on the creation of this commission. The commission can be created and that work, one of the subcommittees that's mentioned in the legislation currently is on music venue preservation. So if that study isn't going to be finished until this fall, the committee can be created and they can receive those results in the fall and begin to use that data and create the plan that they would like to do as a subcommittee. It does not affect the creation of this commission. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Council Member Stiles, I'll, if in a minute I'll come back to you. I know I've got another question up here and if Council Member Syracuse wants to say anything else, I'll come back to the two substitute sponsors. So Council Member Allen, you're recognized. I just need a little more clarification as well. I mean, I guess the way I read those emails was it was a reference to the August meeting where we had a different consultant with all the dots. Um, and it, it, I think at that time it was implied that there would be further meetings with that consultant focused on this. And then Penn Praxis was hired for the music venue preservation study, which I think is phenomenal. Um, and I guess two, two questions of, of clarification. One is what happened to that consultant and, and other than the compilation of the, of the dots that you, you provided later, um, was, was there or could there or should there be any, any further follow up from him? Because I think that's what at least some of those emails were referencing. And then secondly, um, in, in my just trying to understand what the Penn Praxis Group was doing in looking at the RFP, that scope never seemed to be modified from just a venue study. So did the contract have specific changes in it? I mean, I have not been able to find a scope that, that specifically adds additional things to be looked at there. So where can I find that document that, that does describe what that scope of Penn Praxis is now? Two questions. 
I'm sorry. Um, sorry about that. I'll take your second question first. Um, I'll have to go with procurement to get the scope there. I know that um, Councilman Syracuse and I both met with them and they were very willing to assist with this work uh, regardless of if it was in the final scope. Um, There's some, something that they were eager to help us with. Um, on the first point, uh, the meeting that we had back in the fall uh, was a facilitated discussion, uh, knowing that there may never be consensus on this issue. Uh, there's a lot of history here. There are a lot of different perspectives. Uh, the mayor's office paid to bring in a, a professional to facilitate the conversation. Uh, gentleman that, that hosted that is, is not an expert in this field and would really have nothing uh, specific to provide in, in terms of our path forward. Um, we believe that there was a lot of great feedback gathered there. Um, I think any one meeting, even though there were some 45 folks there from different industries, from, from music to film to theater to fashion, um, I don't think one meeting is ever gonna cover the topic completely. Um, but I will say when, when, when I circulated the notes from the meeting uh, to every, everyone there uh, received, uh, if not none, close to no feedback. Um, I, I asked for feedback on those points, um, received none. In the interim time, we had competing legislative proposals put forward. And so the sponsors of those bills then had engagement sessions of their own, uh, which have been ongoing. Sounds like Councilman Syracuse had one la last week. I know Council Lady Stiles has had one. Swope has had some. I think Councilman Syracuse has had one. Um, Mike Jamison hosted a attempt at a reconciliation of the competing bills. Um, so we've had a lot of in, a lot of in, engagement on this issue, and uh, it, it's not our belief that uh, continued meetings would really change our course here. It, it's it's up to the council now to sort of determine the path. Councilmember Allen, <laughs> Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my intent, my 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 hope is uh, that you, you do support this substitute, which does take into the consideration of the feedback that we've gotten from really all of the engagement pieces. Um, my hope is that after we hopefully adopt this substitute, I would like to defer this a little bit more. I would like to have at least one more uh, engagement meeting that I had put together. Um, and this time we, we could we could get everybody, we could notice it properly and get uh, anybody who wants to attend uh, uh, to it. Um, there just wasn't time uh, to get it properly noticed and, and, and all that. Um, but what, what I would like to do, I think this substitute gets us really close to all of the input and feedback that we've received. It achieves the goals that, that people want um, but I would like to bring it back to them one more time, uh, at least just one more time, um, and uh, get their final in input on this. And hopefully we can, we can bring some resolution to this. Um, so that's, that's my desire. When I had this meeting about a week and a half ago, um, we talked about the proposed substitute here and uh, um, they, they would like to see it again. And so I, I would appreciate the support for the substitute and then Let's defer it for a couple months and uh, let's have one more good, at least one more uh, good meeting. I agree with Ben. It's difficult to get this industry engaged. It, it, it really is. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time now. It's just, um, and so um, I, I appreciate the, the, the partners in, in all this and in, in helping to, to, to bring them to the table. Um, but it's just absolutely critical that we have uh, music industry support uh, for this. Um, so thank you. Councilmember Stiles, I'm going to go to Councilmember Gamble on the substitute first. Thank you, Chair. Just for clarification, does the substitute include um, just film, music and film? What's included in entertainment? Is it, does it include the digital content and the other uh, industries that were included in the initial bill? And second, does the fiscal note or potential budget for this uh, for the substitute, is it the same as it was for the initial bill, or is there? I think the initial bill we got the fiscal note of about 
277,000 just for staff if the commission is housed in the mayor's office. Uh, so just wanted to clarify if the substitute includes the same things as the original bill. Councilmember Syracuse, you want to? So, so what was uh, budgeted last fiscal year was $100,000 for the uh, director level position in, in the mayor's office. That's all that's been budgeted. Um, in this current upcoming fiscal year, uh, you know, I think it would be a little, my personal opinion is it would be a little presumptuous to go ahead and allocate more dollars uh, to this um, until we set up the director and have them lead with the, com the seated commission. That would be my, my, my opinion. Um, as far as the, the other aspect of does it include everything that the other did, yes, it just is not prescriptive to actually list every single uh, different kind of uh, um, type of entertainment or music or film and TV. Um, if something else comes up, it fits squarely in here. So it doesn't have to be so prescriptive that it it says every single uh, type of, of entertainment, but it, this is the Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission. So anything under that umbrella, absolutely, it includes it. Councilmember Gamble, you, oh, you're well. Thank you, Councilmember Gamble. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized on the Syracuse substitute. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I think with the engagement that has been had, and again, not being a part of a meeting where we are receiving several emails of complaints and having spoken to some of those stakeholders and what they were told versus what has actually happened, there is confusion because everyone wasn't in the room. But prior to that private meeting, there were several meetings that were had publicly, noticed meetings where all of the energies could come together and give feedback. And what we have heard since last year is the desire for one commission that does clearly delineate multiple creative industries, not just two pillars of focusing on music and film and television, because that does not give credit to the other industries that we have here in town. Our theater industry, our dance industry, our fashion industry, they want voices at the table and they also want to be acknowledged when we're talking about bringing this forward. Again, this is not a friendly substitute. I believe what we have so far is a bill that is supported. We have heard from many people that this is what they wanted back last year when this was BL 22-1250 and moving forward into where we are right now. Um, I would ask the administration in terms of their support of whichever bill is before them right now. Mr. Jamison, you're recognized. We are at the point where we have now exceeded the debate on LPRs in terms of duration. And we would very much like, and I know the council is in a tough position because they have essentially competing bills, but we are hearing from your colleagues that this is um, anxiety provoking for, for you and for us. Um, throughout this, we have essentially maintained three pillars or requests. One, that it be one entity, because that was from the advocacy groups and, and, and meetings, that was the, the message that we understood. Uh, that one entity can have subcommittees, sub councils, what have you, but that there be one. Um, second, that we were hearing from the community was that the executive director cannot be subject to the, the whims of changing administrations. He has to be selected by, he or she has to be selected by the members and run beyond any particular mayoral administration. And then the third uh, request appeared to be to lend cachet to that office that it still be housed within the mayor's office. So, Councilman, uh, both bills that you're discussing now meet those objectives. Um, and now I think it's down to the council to really debate the minutia. Sitting here today, I do hear uh, pros and cons to the, the two individual perspectives. I would worry about omitting any industry within entertainment. I know it's broadly referenced. Um, if that could be tweaked so that stage and theater is, is specifically included, that's great. We've also heard, however, that we are in deep competition with other, with other cities about the music industry itself, and that is our brand, and we have to own that, and shouldn't that be in our, in our title? So if I could blend those two elements together uh, and, and have both of the primary speakers join as, as sponsors, that would be my, my fantasy. I don't know that we'd get there, but that's as much of a synopsis as I can give you as where the administration is. Thank you, Mr. Jamison. We appreciate your fantasies. Um, <laughs> now, 
council member Syracuse you recognize. <laughs> to address Mr. Jameson's question about stage in the theater, my substitute gives an extra seat to the IATSE and SAG-AFTRA. So they, they're in there. I also don't really want to step on the Arts Commission's toes too much here. Um, we need to support the Arts Commission here and not basically take them over. That, that was why I added them as an ex-official role so that they have a seat at the table. So this does address that. Um, and I would appreciate the support of this, this substitute. Thank you. Council Member Hurt, you are recognized. Yes, I thank you, uh, Council Member Syracuse, because I was going to ask Mr. Jameson if the amendment that is being offered covers that uh, in saying that you wanted the two to come together. So does the amendment covers what it is that you were dreaming of? So hearing Councilman Syracuse's explanation that it's he's added an, an IATSE chair, I, I, I see that. What I had seen was that there were two councils underneath the commission, one dealt with music, one dealt with film. But if that was the intent to capture stage and theater by the inclusion of that additional member, I, I understand that. And the, the caption does start off with music. Uh, and we've heard from our friends at the, uh, at the chamber, at the uh, convention center, that that is the real risk we are running with respect to uh, competitive cities, that we have to, to claim that brand. So that's as much I can tell you. That's what I'm heard. I'm sorry. So um, I'm asking for some courage because we need a yes or no answer. This has been very convoluted, and we have gone back and forth, in and out, up and down, and I just need to know what is the best. I have, I, I personally did want to see the Arts Commission involved because I do. Uh, knowing I have history with the Art Commission and knowing that that structure was there, I, I felt like that would be helpful. Uh, but I have been so torn from one to the other and I'm looking for some leadership to help me decide on what needs to be done because if I had my dream, I'd defer all of it indefinitely. Well, I, I, I don't disagree with <laughs> the, perhaps the notion of, of one more deferral to work this out. In, in terms of courage, I think what we've tried to do is make this as... Well, the courage is just saying yes or no. It is going to provide us with what it is that you think that we need to have. Right. If I, if I What we've tried to maintain is a fairly s simple and straightforward, here are the three pillars we think we need to see. Both of the bills before you there or now. The differences I cannot underscore are minute. Is it better to have somebody have a three-year term or a five-year term? I don't know. I really don't. And if that shows a lack of courage, I apologize to you. But I think it's at that level of discourse that this legislative body's role is now up. I'm sorry I can't offer you guidance on the minuscule differences between these two. I think that's what, you, that's what you're hired to do. Member I didn't think I was hired. I thought I was elected. So, so I, I do think that there should be um, some expertise because I'm not an attorney. And sometimes it's those minute things that make a big difference. So I'm just looking for that type of... Um, so maybe perhaps what I need to do is just uh, move for a deferral on um, all of it uh, indefinitely. We have a motion and a second for an indefinite deferral. That's, that supersedes everything else. So it looks like we're gonna have yeses and nos. All in favor for uh, indefinite deferral, please raise your hand for aye. Five, six. No, please raise your hand. Two, two no's, one abstention.
Okay. Councilmember Van Rees, were you abstaining or were you? I'm sorry. Let me get you. You're recognized. I apologize, I'm, I'm put a, you on the spot. I I'm, a, I'm a deferral. I, I'd like the substitute, but we're going to defer. We'll defer. Okay. Is that a, an I? Uh, that's an I. Sorry. <laughs> On the, on the, oh, gotcha. One second. Council Member Stiles, you are not in favor of the indefinite deferral, is that correct? I know, we're just asking if it was over her objection. Um, yes, absolutely not. There are too many stakeholders. We have an Amazon movie that's shooting right now. They are looking at the work that we're doing right now to make. Okay, hey, we just, we, need to, we just need to know if it was over your objection. We didn't need um, any talk okay. on it. Thanks. Yep, the bill has been deferred indefinitely. And seeing no objection, we're adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.